Hey, tumors are scary things. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today, I'm going to do an album review on the latest Swans album, Leaving Meaning. So Swans is a New York experimental post-rock noise rock no wave band. And this is their 15th album. They have been making music for a very, very, very long time. If you have been paying attention to my YouTube channel, you may have watched my three previous Swans album reviews where I review the last three Swans album where they basically made a trilogy of double albums. And the music in this trilogy of albums are so grand, powerful, visceral sometimes they are very evil sinister and disturbing sometimes very larger than life beautiful cerebral meditative nonetheless the music on this trilogy are some of the best rock music of the decade we have the incredibly wicked and twisted the seer and then we have to be kind my favorite swans album and one of my favorite albums of all times because it is just so bone crushing and epic and violent and in your face and then we have the glowing man their last album released in the year 2016 where it's very cerebral meditative very hypnotic and atmospheric but all three of these albums are great and before the hiatus of 14 years they released a bunch of albums as well including their earlier work that are very noisy primal abrasive and their later work which are more melodic but still equally as abstract helpless child go listen to it anyway after um uh an interesting discography full of albums they ended at their 15th album fingers crossed this is not their last album uh but yeah anyway leaving meaning this album doesn't feel like um their last three or four or even five albums at all it feels like to me a collection of just tracks made by them and this album is way mellower and way quieter and softer than like so many previous swans albums because you know it's 2019, it's the year of the low-key, everybody's dropping moody and low-key and low-effort albums. I mean, look at the album title, look at the album cover, you know what Swans is up to. And for the most part on the album, it's still very cerebral, very atmospheric, and very meditative and hypnotic, but this time they venture more into avant folk music and gothic folk and gothic country and country folk and uh, it's a pretty interesting new direction but also not a very exciting one to me there is no flow to this project one song is very mellow and soft and elegant the next song is kind of repetitive and clunky and raw and weird and uh, there are also there is also not a concept tying all of these tracks together to me they just feel like loose collections of tracks the album starts off with hums a two minute long intro probably uh, one of the shorter tracks that swans had released uh, lately and it's a it's an ambient intro with some atmospheric strings and keys leading up to the first core track of the album Aniline and this track is actually stunningly beautiful listening to this track is like taking a a bath in holy water that is sweet and pure it's uh, it's a very pure track with these incredibly glossy and elegant pianos and guitars sort of sprinkling and sparkling in the background the track essentially is a soft sweet and milky ballad that's super peaceful and calming it sounds like the windows xp default screensaver and it's super mellow and quiet but in a very 
calming and serene way, which I really love. The next track is The Hanging Man, which sounds totally different from Aniline in that it is basically 11 minutes long of this groove that keeps on slithering and sneaking and swinging over and over and over again for straight 11 minutes. And Swans is no stranger to repetition, but throughout the entire track, there is not much in terms of progression or dynamics or a build. The instrumentations just feel kind of stuck, kind of stagnant. And um, this song sounds like an intro to an old swan song where it usually builds up to something violent and aggressive and explosive. But in this track's case, it just gets repetitive and it just ends off. Even the shouts and yells by Michael Girard on this track feel tamer relatively to his previous songs. However, I do kind of like the sneaky little synth line towards the end of the track. We have the track Amnesia, which has these cold and icy and lonely guitars that are more low-key and faint. And uh, it's another one of those really mellow, soft ballads on the album. Except every time they would say the word amnesia or sing the word amnesia, the entire song would suddenly stop. And then there's this rush of instrumentations that are kind of dramatic, where basically a group of vocalists, including Michael Girard himself, goes amnesia. And it's just okay. It's just okay. The song isn't great for me every time this little amnesia thing happens. It's not really all that spectacular, in my opinion. And then we have the title track, which is 12 minutes long, and it sounds like an extension of the track Amnesia, except the vocals are even more washed out, the instrumentals feel super stagnant and bland, and the whole track feels kind of aimless and directionless. So I'm not a huge fan of this track either. The next track is Sunfucker. If you have been a fan of Swans, you know that their album titles and their song titles tend to get kind of primal with the skin, the teeth, the blood, the, the fire, the sky, the, the hands, the mountain, the light, the throat. Anyway, um, this track is fantastic. One of my favorite songs on the album. We get these super sunburnt guitars. It's gothic country slash gothic folk and it has this really just sunburnt vibe to the guitars that are just so beautiful because they sound kind of calming and peaceful but there's this hint of of evilness and and cynicism in the guitars that makes it kind of wicked and a little twisted and i just love it and this song sounds like a very rich Trulistic and religious chant where Michael Girard and co sings surrender over and over and over again. We also get these manic springy guitars which reminds me a lot of some of the guitar work off of The Glowing Man and after the halfway point on the track this steady grooves sort of builds and we get these very grand instrumentations of dulcimer strings and bells and there's this really impressive build-up and it's one really well composed and constructed track. The next track Cathedrals of Heaven also sounds like an extension of the track Amnesia or an extension off of the track Leaving Meaning, the title track where we get these gloomy dejected atmospheric guitars and these vocals that are kind of slow kind of drab, and the instrumentation's kind of stagnant, not one of the better tracks on the album. We also have The Nub, which has a really nice, haunting, eerie, sort of horror vibe to it. And surely there is tension cooking underneath the track. But just when you think the tension is about to be released and something spectacular and engaging is going to happen in the track, it just ends off in a 
droney way just fizzled out. It's an it's not one of the more satisfying tracks on the album, I have to admit. The next track, It's Coming It's Real, is definitely one of the better tracks on the album as well. It's another gothic country folk ballad with the very sunburnt guitars again. And there's this darkly comedic and darkly lighthearted tone to the guitars and the melodies of the track that just makes it so much more special and flavorful. The third last track is Some New Things with some really nice grooves and busy buried vocals underneath. Kind of reminds me of Frankie M off of The Glowing Man again. And this track also has a really nice sour and menacing tone, which I really love. We have the penultimate track, What Is This? Where we get some tribal drums and folky strings, even though this track is one of the more somber and mellow tracks on the album. But still, the vocals, the instrumentations, they are enchanting, they are magical, and they are gorgeous. And towards the end, we get a really impressive crescendo with some Christmas bells, and it sounds really nice to the ears. The album ends off with My Phantom Limb, which sounds like a return to the olden days, except it's not as aggressive or as raw or as primal as uh, their very, very early noise rock work, but this song is very much noisy, where it gets super manic and dizzying with layers upon layers of Michael Girard's vocals just babbling, ranting, yelling, shouting, and speaking. And it gets noisy, but also it gets very hypnotizing. And uh, it's a pretty nice closer to the album. So yeah, overall, while it is nowhere near as cinematic or as satisfying as The Seer, to be kind or the glowing man there are still a handful of highlights on the album and um even though they're mellow they're still flavorful and memorable so i'm gonna leave it at that my favorite track here is probably aniline if not then it's sun fucker and my least favorite is the title track i'm giving swans leaving meaning a 7 out of 10. Yeah, another 7.6. So, have you listened to this album from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it and hate it, if you hate it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. I feel incredibly sleepy right now, so... Yeah.